Welcome to our uh, deep dive into the eighth annual Hacker Powered Security Report. Yeah. We're going to unpack some key findings, mm -hmm. explore what these trends really mean for building a stronger security approach in 2024 yeah. and beyond. You know, the, the foundation of this report is incredibly solid. Yeah. We're looking at insights pulled from over 500,000 real world vulnerability reports. Wow. And surveys of thousands of security professionals, researchers, mm -hmm. and customers. Yeah. It's a it's a snapshot of the challenges and solutions organizations are facing right now. All right, let's jump right in. Yeah. One of the biggest takeaways is the impact of artificial intelligence. Right. AI, for short. AI. It's not science fiction anymore. Right. AI is actively shaping the cybersecurity landscape, both for attackers and defenders. It's fascinating. Almost half of the security leaders surveyed. Oh, wow. 48% to be exact, okay. flagged generative AI as a major concern. Wow, that's significant. Uh, Why is that such a worry for them? Well, AI can analyze massive amounts of data, spot patterns, mm -hmm. and automate tasks much faster than humans. Right. So on one hand, it can be a powerful tool for good. Yeah. Imagine faster breach detection oh, yeah. and response, okay. potentially saving millions of dollars per incident. Wow. But the flip side is what's making people nervous. You're right. It's like a double-edged sword. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The report dives into how AI is also becoming a potent weapon for attackers. Right. We're talking about the risk of training data leaks, mm. people using AI within organizations without permission. Okay. And even AI models themselves being hacked. Oh, wow. It's a whole new layer of complexity. The report mentions AI red teaming as a way to address this. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what that is? It's essentially hiring ethical hackers okay. to test the security of your AI systems. Right. Almost like giving your AI a security checkup. Okay, interesting. And the majority of folks surveyed, 67% mm. uh -huh. believe that independent external review like this is the most effective way to find those hidden AI vulnerabilities. Oh. You need that fresh perspective yeah. to uncover weaknesses that internal teams might miss. Well, I can see why that would be crucial. And mm. How are security researchers themselves adapting to this AI revolution? That's another interesting trend. Okay. About 20% of researchers now say AI is essential to their work. Wow. A big jump from last year. Yeah. They're using it for things like automating code analysis mm -hmm. and generating vulnerability reports in a fraction of the time it used to take. That's huge. Yeah. The report even mentions one researcher, Hazim El Said, yeah. who uses AI to generate reports in seven to 10 minutes. That's amazing. He said it used to take him 30 to 40 minutes before. Wow. It's amazing to see AI actually speeding up the process like that. It is. And even HackerOne has developed their own AI tool called Hi. Oh. It helps their customers process reports, communicate with researchers, mm. and ultimately fix vulnerabilities faster. AI is clearly changing the game. Yeah. But let's move on to some of the more specific threats outlined in the report. Okay. There was a 12% jump in the number of valid vulnerabilities discovered last year. Wow. Totaling over 78,000. Okay. Of those, 27% were high or critical. That's a lot of vulnerabilities. Right. But as you said, it's important to go beyond the broad trends and see what's happening within specific industries. Yeah. The report breaks down the data in a really helpful way, hmm. showing which vulnerabilities are most prevalent in different sectors. Definitely. Right? Like the finding that insecure direct object references, or IDOers for short, yeah. are up a whopping 47% in the financial services sector. That should be particularly alarming for anyone working in financial services. Wow. This tells us attackers are increasingly targeting authentication mechanisms yeah. and access controls in financial applications. So what can those in the financial services industry do about this? For those of you in this sector, reviewing your authorization logic mm -hmm. and implementing robust input validation should be top priorities. Basically making sure only the right people have access to the right data. Makes sense. What else is the report highlighting in terms of industry-specific vulnerabilities? Well, in government, for example, okay. cross-site scripting or XSS yeah. is still a big problem, mm -hmm. likely due to reliance on legacy systems. So what kind of risks does this pose for government agencies? Think about it. Mm -hmm. Compromised websites and services could lead to breaches of public data, right? disruption to essential services, yeah. and even damage to public trust. Okay. It's a reminder that security needs to be top of mind. 
And the retail and e-commerce industry, what are they up against? The report found a 71% increase in information disclosure vulnerabilities. Oh my gosh. This highlights how vital it is to protect customer data in an age where online shopping is so prevalent. Yeah, that is a huge jump. It is. E-commerce businesses are collecting so much personal and financial data these days. I can yeah. see why that's a big concern. Right. Now, what about sectors that are generally seen as very security focused? like cryptocurrency and blockchain. Even there, we see vulnerabilities on the rise, right. particularly business logic errors, mm. which are up 37%. Oh, okay. It just goes to show that new technology often comes with new security challenges. The report also mentions something I found a bit counterintuitive. Mm. Less tech-reliant industries often have a higher percentage of high or critical vulnerabilities. Yeah. Why is that? I think it comes down to priorities and resources. Mm -hmm. A lot of these organizations may not have traditionally invested heavily in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. perhaps because they didn't think they were a target. Right. But as more businesses rely on technology, everyone becomes vulnerable. That makes sense. Yeah. Speaking of resources, I found the data on bounty trends to be super interesting. Yeah. You know, how organizations are actually budgeting for these threats. It is interesting because how organizations allocate their bounty budgets mm -hmm. doesn't always line up with the volume of reports. Oh. For example, open redirects are fairly common, right. but don't usually get much bounty money. So what kinds of vulnerabilities do command higher payouts? While IDORs, which we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. often come with much higher payouts, right. this reflects the potential damage they can cause. Right. Giving hackers direct access to sensitive data is a much bigger deal. So it's not just about how often a vulnerability occurs, right. but about its potential impact. Yeah. Organizations need to prioritize their spending accordingly. Absolutely. This report really highlights the need for a more proactive approach to security. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we'll be delving into next. Okay. We'll explore the concept of a layered security strategy right. and how to really measure the value of proactive security measures. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So far, we've talked about how AI is shaking things up in the cybersecurity landscape. Mm -hmm. And we've explored some of the top vulnerabilities impacting different industries. Right. Now, I'm really interested in getting into this whole idea of a layered security strategy that the report talks about. It sounds like a more proactive way to approach things. It absolutely is. Okay. The report emphasizes the importance of continuous vulnerability discovery. Right. Not just checking for issues at the end of development, but throughout the entire software development life cycle. I can see how that would make a big difference. Yeah. It's like if you only inspect a building for safety issues once it's already built, you might miss some pretty crucial things. Bro. Exactly. It's far more effective to build security into the process from the beginning. Mm -hmm. The report calls this the better together approach, okay. which combines traditional penetration testing or pen testing with bug bounty programs. So it's kind of like having a two pronged defense using different techniques to really cover all the bases. Mm. Can you explain the difference between pen testing and bug bounty programs? Of course. Okay. Pen testing is like a very thorough security audit mm -hmm. where expert testers try to find vulnerabilities in your systems. Right. It's great for uncovering systemic issues and potential weaknesses. Think of it like a medical checkup. Okay. Bug bounty programs, on the other hand, are more like having a team of specialists constantly on call right. looking for signs of trouble. Yeah. These programs invite ethical hackers to find vulnerabilities and get rewarded for their efforts. The report actually highlighted a 67% increase in pen testing via HackerOne over the past year. Yeah. That's it, pretty significant. It is. It shows that more organizations are recognizing the value of this proactive approach. Mm -hmm. And one thing I found really insightful is the distinction the report makes between pen tests and bug bounty programs. Oh. They actually complement each other quite well. Oh, that's interesting. How so? Well, pen tests are great at finding those systemic issues, oh. like flaws in your overall security architecture. Yeah. yeah. But bug bounty programs, because they involve a wider range of ethical hackers with diverse skills and perspectives, mm -hmm. can often uncover vulnerabilities that pen tests might miss. Think about it. Bug bounty hunters are looking for those real world attack vectors. Yeah. The ways an actual attacker would try to exploit your system. So it's like having both a general checkup and a specialist consultation. Precisely. Gives you a much broader perspective. It's about getting that comprehensive view of your security posture. The report mentioned that 42% of organizations find their most critical bugs during the deployment phase. Yeah. That's a huge argument for ongoing testing, isn't it? 
It really is. Yeah. You can't just assume everything is fine once the software is out there. Right. New vulnerabilities can pop up at any time as technology changes and attackers get more creative. And this brings us to something that's probably top of mind for a lot of security professionals right now. Yeah. How do you prove the value of all these security measures? Right. I mean, with data breach costs going up and the cybersecurity skills shortage, it's more important than ever to demonstrate the ROI of proactive security. Absolutely. It's not enough to just say, hey, we need more security. Right. You've got to make the business case. Yeah. And that's where the concept of return on mitigation or ROM comes in. ROM. Okay. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. Well, it's a way to quantify the benefits of those proactive measures in a language everyone understands money. Okay. Instead of just focusing on the cost of fixing vulnerabilities. Right. ROM compared that cost to the potential financial losses from an actual cyber incident. So it's like saying, this is how much we spend on prevention, and this is how much we save by preventing a potentially catastrophic breach. Exactly. But it helps you answer that question. How much do we avoid losing because we caught these vulnerabilities early? That's a really good point. The report even includes a great example from a security leader in the media and entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. They fixed a vulnerability that cost them $15,000, but could have potentially cost them millions if it had been exploited. Wow. That's a pretty compelling case for proactive security. That's incredible. Talk about a return on investment. So just to recap what we've covered in this deep dive so far, yeah. AI is a game changer. Mm -hmm. Vulnerabilities vary across industries. Right. And a layered security approach is crucial, especially when you can actually demonstrate the value of those efforts through ROM. It's a lot to digest, I know. Yeah. But the report does a fantastic job of laying it all out. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it provides a really positive outlook. Mm -hmm. You can build a stronger security posture if you take the right steps. Well said. All right, welcome back to our final segment on the 8th Annual Hacker-Powered Security Report. Yeah. We've covered a lot of ground. Definitely. From the rise of AI to specific industry threats. Right. And the importance of a layered security approach. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what stands out to you as the biggest takeaway from this report? You know, I think what really strikes me is that security is no longer just a technical issue. Mm -hmm. It's a strategic one. Okay. It's about understanding your risks. Right. Prioritizing resources. Yeah. And building a culture of security within your organization. That's a great point. Yeah. The report doesn't just present problems. Right. It offers solutions and a framework for taking action. Exactly. It really empowers organizations to take control of their security. And that leads us to a question the report poses to its readers. Okay. What one action will you take to improve your organization's security posture? That's such a great question to reflect on. Yeah. We've heard about specific vulnerabilities, different approaches to testing, mm. and even ways to measure the ROI of security investments. Right. It's all about turning this knowledge into action. Exactly. Yep. One of the core messages of this report is that the human element is absolutely critical. Yeah. We're talking about the skilled security researchers who are discovering vulnerabilities yeah. and the security professionals working tirelessly to protect their organizations. Mm -hmm. It's a reminder that security is a team effort. Yeah. And we all have a role to play. Well said. Thanks. This deep dive has been incredibly insightful. It has. And I hope our listeners feel better equipped to navigate the ever-evolving world of cybersecurity. Re For those who want to learn more, I highly recommend checking out the full report and HackerOne's resources online. Definitely. There's a wealth of information available for anyone who wants to dive deeper. Absolutely. And remember, security is a journey, not a destination. Hmm. Staying vigilant informed and collaborative is key that's the perfect note to end on yeah thanks for joining me on this deep dive of course it was fun until next time stay safe out there <laughs>